So when looking at an increase or a decrease, you're looking at the change between two numbers. And typically with these, it's kind of like there's an old number and a new number. There's something that used to be true, and then we have this new thing that's true. So with that, I describe it as new number and original number, like you have your starting number and then your new value coming through. Um, there are different terminologies used out there, but this one tends to make the most sense in my brain, and maybe it'll work for you too. So first thing we're going to do is we can look at the difference between the two numbers. So you take that new number that you're working with minus the original. Now, when you look at this difference, you can get an idea of whether you're seeing an increase or decrease, because if this difference is positive, that would mean this new number is larger, so that would suggest an increase. If you take this um, difference and it's negative, then that would suggest a decrease, so that would mean this new number is smaller than the original, so when you subtract, you're getting a negative number out. Then what we're going to do is to get the percent increase or decrease, then what we're going to do is divide by the original number. So we can break this into different parts here, but if you're looking directly for percent increase or decrease, then what you're going to do is take that new number minus the old number divided by the old number. That's what we're going to be doing really in, in short. All right, so. Tamanika got a raise in her hourly pay. It went from 1550 to 1755. So now this idea of new versus old can sometimes be easiest to find that what's the new number? Like what is she being paid now? What's her new pay value? And that's the 1755. That's her new value. And then this would be the original. So she started at the 1550. That was the original value. And then it increased. Now, with this being a raise, we already have a hint of what kind of percent change we should be seeing. If this is a raise, we should be seeing a percent increase coming through here. Okay, so if you just wanted to see the difference, so if we wanted to know the change in value really, then what we could do is take the new value, 1755, minus the old value of 15.5. And that would just be a 2.05. So we could say that there was a $2.05 increase in pay. But that's not the question here. What we want is the percent increase. So what we want to see is if we have this change of $2.05, what percentage is that out of our original amount, that original starting amount? So what we want to do is to get this percent change. Again, that difference came out to be positive, so that's suggesting an increase as well there. So for percent change, what we want to do is, I'm going to write out the full form here, even though we did part of the math already, but we're taking that difference of that new value minus the old value, and we want to divide it by that old value, that original pay, because we want to see what proportion is this difference out of that original amount to see this percent change. So with that, this is really taking 2.05 divided by 15.5. If we plug that into the calculator, I'm just gonna throw some decimals down. That'll be a 0.132258. And uh, they don't say what to round to here, so I'm just gonna round to, let's say um, in percentage form, I'm gonna round to one decimal place. So if I'm changing to a percentage, I'm going to go 1, 2, so it'll be 13 point, and I'm just going to round to that place right there. So 13.2% is the increase. That's a very nice raise for a job. So uh, Tamanika had a 13.2% increase in hourly pay. Let's throw the word increase next to it to make sure it's clear which direction it went in. All right, annual student fees at the University of California rose from about $4,000 to about $9,000. So from 2000 to 2014, that was our change. So if we think about this starting value or the old value, that would be the $4,000. In fact, you can see it's older just in terms of the years here. So 4,000 is the original, 
and then we saw change happen as time passed, so the new value is the $9,000. Instead of separating it up, let's just look for the percent change that's occurring. I'm going to go directly with this. So I'm going to take the new value minus the old value, so 9,000 minus 4,000, divided by the original value, or that old value, which is 4,000. So what we're going to get is this connection here of those two values should be matching up there. So you'll have your new value minus, and then the same value showing up there. All right, equals, and if we just plug that into a calculator, you're going to see it's 1.25. Now keep in mind that this is supposed to be a percentage and it is not 1.25%. We need to move that decimal place. So I'm going to go 1, 2. So really this is 125%. Which makes sense because if you think of 100%, oh yeah, and this is increase. It got larger and that value came out to be positive. So 125% increase. That makes sense because 100% increase, so 100% of 4,000 is 4,000. So if this was $8,000, that would be a 100% increase. 125% makes sense because this is a little bit over $8,000. So you might see these values above 100%, especially when that original amount doubles, doubles or more than doubles. Okay, a grocery store reduced the price of a loaf of bread from 280 to 273. So the original amount, so it started at 280, and then the new amount that they're charging is 273. So in terms of calculating percent change, we are going to take the new value minus original over original. And if we plug that into a calculator, that'll be a negative 0 0.025. Now that negative right there, I want to pay attention to that because it's important. It also makes sense in terms of the wording of the problem. But with this case, we have a decrease. So I want to make sure that comes through in the wording of my problem. So if I change this to a percentage, so I go 1, 2, that's going to be a 2.5. So I could write this as negative 2.5%, but typically when we make a sentence with this, we would want to describe it as a 2.5% decrease. So typically what we'll do in our sentences is always describe the percentage as positive, but then positive and negative comes through in the word that we choose to follow it. If it's positive, then it's an increase. So it's negative, decrease. Okay, one more scenario here. John's salary was $49,500 last year. This year his salary was cut to $44,055. So this is where he was originally, and then he had a pay cut, and that's his new amount. So to find the percent change, we're going to take the new value, that 44055 minus that original value over the original. And that's going to be a negative 0.11. Move our decimal over, which will be a negative 11%, which means we, uh, let's see, John's salary had an 11% decrease. That's too bad, John. There you go. All right, so that's percent increase decrease, comes down to taking a difference and dividing. The trickiest part tends to be with these is identifying what the original value is and what the new value is, because it just comes down to a formula. So I just kind of think in terms of a sequence of time even, like what came first, and that would be the original value. And then whatever they changed to, that would be your new value.